Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a driving and racing game in Unity 5. Welcome to episode 1. So in this series we're going to be taking a look at different ways we can create a driving and or a racing game. We'll look at various aspects of how we can integrate different features of a game, i.e. how we can have different time modes, how we can create AI difficulty, and we'll roll on as we go along. So each episode we begin, I'll tell you what we're going to do in this episode and what we're going to do in the next episode and so on. So by the end of it, we'll have created a very nice game that we can actually play with. So we'll create a few of our own ideas at the same time and we'll also take a couple of aspects from various games in history, things like uh, Gran Turismo for example. Uh, we may even take some karting aspects, so something like Mario Kart may come into effect at some point. So I want to show you as many different ways of creating as possible. So this series is going to be aimed at absolute beginners to Unity. So if you've just downloaded Unity, want to make a driving game, this is going to be absolutely perfect for you. Even if you have some experience with Unity but aren't too sure about how you would go about making a driving game, this is going to suit you down to the ground too. If you perhaps have seen a couple of my other tutorials, you know about beginner stuff to Unity, maybe you could skip this this episode if you wanted to. I will be going over a couple of things to make this more specific for making a driving game. But if you feel like you already know the basics, then don't worry too much. So for you guys who are brand new to Unity, when you install, you may come across something like this. This is the uh, download assistant, and you will need to make sure you have everything I have ticked here. For example, if you want to build for iOS and Android, make sure you do have them ticked. This one here, Microsoft Visual Studio. Now, the programming in Unity can be done in either Mono Develop or Visual Studio. It's entirely up to you which one you use. I'll be using Mono Develop, but if you want to use Visual Studio, make sure you have that ticked. It's also worth noting that in this Im particular image, I have version 5.4.2. However, I am using version 5.5 for this series. It doesn't make too much of a difference. Uh, a couple of little things may be different here and there, but it's not drastically different. So as long as you have a version of Unity 5, this tutorial series will make sense to you. So the basic layout of Unity. When you start a new project, you should have something which looks a little bit like this. So you would have your project name. So in this case, I just call mine JV Driving. So you would call your game whatever it would be and the location of where you want to save. Don't worry about any asset packages. We'll deal with them as and when we need to. So once you've got all that done, you would just click on Create Project and then you would have this screen right here. So I want to go through this nice and quickly, but simply enough for you to understand. So over here we have something called a hierarchy. Now the hierarchy is where we store every object which is in this view here, which is the scene window. So if we were to select the main camera, you would see it would be selected in the scene view. So literally everything we create in the scene view is here in text format to select. Now the scene view can be used for many different things. Like for example, if we have assets, we can drag them into the scene or into the hierarchy. Well, this is where we visualize everything we've created. A couple of little shortcuts. You can use the right mouse button to hold down and pan around like so. Left click is to select objects and the mouse wheel zoom in and out. So I'll go through various different little shortcuts that we can use each and every time we need to use them. So they're the very basics that you would need at this moment. Next one along here, we have the game tab. This is where we would actually manage to play our game by clicking this little button here once we've actually created something. Over here, we have the inspector panel. The inspector panel represents everything which is attached to one particular object and everything that's attached is called a component. So, for example, if we click on our camera, we can see we have a camera component as well as a couple of others. If we have our light selected, you can see that we have the light component. They can be changed by clicking the little arrow just there to collapse or unhide. There are many different components that you can attach to pretty much any object, and there's loads of different settings that you can have in these components. Don't worry about them too much. Everything will be explained as we go along. At the top, you should always have a transform. This will represent the position, so the x-axis, which is on the red arrow in the scene view, the y, which is on the green, and the z, or z, depending on which part of the world you're from, is here and represented 
by the blue arrow. So if we were to move this downwards, we will see that the position is changing. The rotation represents which way the object is facing. So if we were to rotate this by holding down the left mouse button on the X where there's two arrows, you can move it side to side and you can see just how much rotation occurs in the scene view with whatever object you have attached. So we can do that with the Y as well, and we can do it with the Z. Scale represents the size. Now generally this will make too much of a difference on some non-physical objects. A non-physical object is something like what we have here, a camera and a light. You don't physically see them in the scene as such. However, if we have objects in there like a cube, which we can go to game object, 3D object and cube, you can then change the scale like so. So this is an object which you can change the scale on. Most objects in the scene view will be like this. This creates the visualization of the game. So before we go into any more objects, I have just selected the cube and pressed delete there to get rid of it. We don't quite need it right now. And you can see with nothing selected in the hierarchy or the scene view, the inspector panel is just blank. We don't need to worry about that. So down here, we have the project window. This is where we store all our assets that we've created or imported. So if we would have scripts created, we would have them down here. Any textures, materials, objects, animations, they all appear down here. And these are the objects that we then drag into our scene. Next one along here is the console. Now the console is where we come up with errors. So if we have a script typed up and we've misspelled something, it would tell us in the console that there appears to be an error in our script. We need to sort it. And finally, you may not have this. It depends on what settings you have for your Unity by default, but the animation tab. If you don't have that, you can select it by going to this little drop down menu here, clicking on add tab, and then clicking on animation at the bottom and it will bring it here. Now it is also worth noting that little things like this can be moved quite easily. So for example, we could put the animation, if we hold down the left mouse button, here. It's up to you if you want to have it there, but I like it down here. So you can do that with pretty much anything in Unity. All these little tabs can be moved around. We could put the console at the end if we wanted, at the front. It's entirely up to you. I tend to go with the default layout as this is aimed at beginners. I like beginners to have a sense of this is what they see, this is what they get. It's easier to understand that way. So now we have our basics uh, about us and we know where everything is, where we can see things. Let's insert an object. So if we go to game object, as we did before with the cube, we have a lot of different options up here that we can insert. 3D object, 2D object, light, audio, UI, particles, and a camera. So we want to go to 3D object and we want to select one of these. So because we're making a driving game, we want our ground to be rather versatile. So we want to be able to mold it in a way, shape and fashion that feels more comfortable to surround our track. So we're going to do that by going to terrain. So a terrain is kind of, it's a game object, which is very versatile in many different ways. So we can get around this by uh, going onto it and explaining these little options along here. So this first option allows us to raise and lower this terrain. So for example, if we were to select one of these brushes, this one for example, increase the brush size to whatever we would want, so you can see that we have quite a large blue area. That blue area represents where the brush size is going to occur when we left click. So you can see we've raised it there. The opacity indicates just how much we want this to happen. So if I was to press Control Z to undo that move, previously we had the opacity set to 100. If we have it set to 13 now and do the exact same, it won't raise quite as high. So I'm going to scroll out now and I'm going to hold down the middle mouse wheel to move the scene around. You can also do that by selecting the hand tool at the top here. If you have done something like this and you want to maybe select something in the scene but can't quite understand what's happening, you may want to select this tool here. 
So then you can select any object within the scene. So let's change the paint height of our terrain, which is the second one along. So let's choose a different brush. Let's choose this brush here. Brush size is 99. Opacity, let's have that as, let's have that as 42. So we've scrolled along there and height three. So what this will do now is this will raise the terrain to a height of three constantly. So you can see that everywhere we drag this now, it's raising the terrain higher. Now to put that into perspective, if we were to do that on a different tool in the terrain, here for example, it would just constantly raise like that. So I'm doing this now by holding down the left mouse button and just dragging the mouse up. And you can see that happens. And as I say with this one, we can change, let's say, the height to, let's say, 5. And then we can increase the height there and make it a constant height all around. So you can see that we have a little bit of landscaping going on now. It's not fantastic, but we can use this to our advantage later on. The smooth height, which is the next one along, allows us to smooth out evenly edges like this. So if we select this first brush, for example, change the opacity to maybe 35. Let's reduce the brush size to about 22. And then if we hold down our left mouse button and drag, you can see here that we have a nice smoothness happening to this particular area of our terrain. So if we increase the opacity, it gets smoother and smoother as we move it. So now, although here it looks quite like a bit of a tall jump, here we have a nice smooth ramp, which would be ideal for a car. So the next one along is the paint texture. Now the paint texture is something I will get into in the next episode. Uh, this allows us to actually paint the track as such, allows us to paint detail onto it with just with texture. And the same applies to the place trees and the paint details uh, options just here. So these three we'll deal with in the next episode when we bring in some textures. So this final one brings us to our terrain settings. Generally here, for a beginner, you don't need to change too much. One thing we may need to change, and I probably will do now, is the terrain width and length. So by default, you bring in a terrain into Unity, it is 500 by 500. We want to change this because we want this to be a little bit larger to give us more space to work with. So let's double that. Let's have 1000 and hit enter by 1000 and then hit enter again. So you can see it's kind of stretched what we've already made. It's always wise to change these settings as early on as possible. The reason being that if you were to build an entire track and then change the settings of these, it would stretch and distort what you've already built and may misalign things. So the general um, settings here don't really need to be changed too much. By default, they're pretty decent. So, Let's have a quick look at our options for different um, platforms that we can publish this on. So if we go to File and then go to Build Settings, it shows us here different options that we can publish a game for. By default, I think PC, Mac and Linux standalone will be uh, selected and you can know which one you're actually developing for by the little Unity sign next to it. So earlier on when I told you about ticking the iOS or Android, if you want to develop for them, this is where it comes into practice. So if you want to make your game for iOS, for example, you would click iOS here, and then you would click on Switch Platform. Same applies to Android and pretty much any other device that you would want. When it comes to developing for Xbox or PlayStation, you would need to get the module. Now the problem with this is developing for Xbox or PlayStation, in this case, for example, a Vita, you would need a license. So at this point, it wouldn't technically be free, as my intention to teach you everything here is to be done for free. If you want to build for, for example, PS Vita, then perhaps get the license. But for now, you just build for whatever you want. So I'm going to stick as PC, Mac and Linux standalone. And then we can close that. So at the moment, as we can see, we have this nice scene. It's not particularly great. 
it's just a terrain with a little bit going on. So let's do one more thing before we close this tutorial. Let's go on to our raise and lower terrain. And what we can do is if you hold down the shift, you can actually lower the terrain you've already raised. So hold shift and click. And you can see that you create little indents. Now you can keep hold of the left mouse button and drag and it will do that. So then let's perhaps smooth this out a little. So let's increase our brush size. Let's keep our opacity about 81-ish and then we can just smooth that there. So we have kind of like a dip in what will eventually be our track. So modeling a terrain around a track is a lot of fun personally. I enjoy doing it because you can do all little twists and turns and model it perfectly to how you would want to see it. So next episode what I hope to do is I hope to bring in some um, some let's see what should we have let's have some textures so we'll paint our terrain um, we'll be doing a bit of C sharp script in the next episode I think because we'll have a few little things to play around with because we'll be bringing in a car to drive around and we'll fill around more with the terrain we'll probably also have a little bit of lighting to play around with as well so we'll deal with this directional light next episode too so the final thing before we close this tutorial let's save this scene and you can see already in the assets down here we have this new terrain here that contains a bit of data for this terrain it's nothing to worry about at the moment so if we go to file save scene as and let's save this as race area 01 and you can see that this is created like an asset down here. This represents the scene that we've built. So if we were to create a new scene, for example, file, and let's go to a new scene, you would have the default again. And if we double click this saved one, it brings us back. Now you may notice down here, we have a little bit of a progress bar and you can see that the terrain itself hasn't loaded properly. That's because it's still theoretically loading it and making it Look, well, look how it should look at the moment. So if it does look like this when you reload it back up, don't worry too much, it is normal. You just have to wait for Unity to kind of catch up. So once we've done that, make sure you click on File and then Save Project. You want to make sure that absolutely everything is saved that you've done so far. So guys, until the next episode, thank you very much for watching.